Hello folks, I'm Doc Sanders. Often misunderstood and unjustly feared like Dr. Frankenstein's monster, biotechnology doesn't get the credit it deserves for making life better for people around the world. You may not realize it, but biotechnology has been around for years, just in simpler forms, in processes we've come to take for granted and don't typically think of as biotechnology. There's fermentation, for example, as in cheese and bread making, beer brewing, and making penicillin. Biotechnology has since become more sophisticated. Scientists can now isolate genes from plants and insert them into other plants to produce new products that benefit all of us. Also through biotechnology, bacterial cells are used to produce animal and human proteins hormones, and other biological components that promote processes such as blood clotting. One of the most useful genetic combinations produces human insulin. In this process, a gene for insulin is inserted in yeast cells, which are brewed in a big vat, producing vast quantities of the hormone to regulate blood sugar levels in diabetic patients. Through this process, insulin products can be tailored to more precisely regulate blood sugar levels of a given patient. In contrast, the old method for insulin production, extracting insulin from pigs and cows, could not be customized for specific patients. The growth hormone somatotropin is produced similarly in yeast cells that contain the gene for the hormone. The product of this process stimulates production of human growth hormone in children who have a serious growth defect. Likewise, the gene for the cow growth hormone, when placed in the yeast cells, produces bovine growth hormone, or BST. This hormone stimulates the appetite of an adult cow. As a result, for every extra pound of feed a cow eats, she will produce two more pounds of milk, a very effective strategy for improving the efficiency of cows. Recent research has also demonstrated it significantly reduces our carbon footprint. This strategy has proven safe for cows, good for dairymen's pocketbooks, and beneficial to the environment because it produces more milk with fewer inputs. Best of all, it creates a safe product that controls costs for the consumer. Biotechnology in agriculture continues to become even more sophisticated. The corn plant's DNA has been sequenced, as have the DNA of many other crops such as wheat and cotton. Scientists are extracting these identified genes from one plant to benefit another and to better meet the world's nutritional needs. Another example of biotechnology at its finest is the transferring of drought-resistant characteristics of certain varieties of barley to rice in an effort to stave off food shortages in poor countries. Through strategic breeding, these varieties of barley yield a bumper crop with only one irrigation instead of the usual seven or eight waterings. The drought-resistant gene of barley has been extracted and inserted into rice, so it will flourish even when rain is sparse. Despite its obvious advantages, biotechnology in agriculture has encountered another form of resistance, that of people and governments that lack an understanding of the benefits of modern science. Here's one example a geneticist in India has developed genetically modified rice with a fortified level of vitamin A. Unfortunately, the Indian government is yet to adopt a plan to distribute this jazzed up rice, more than eight years after it was developed. Here's yet another example. A California biotechnology firm developed flavor saver tomatoes that kept their freshness and flavor during shipping. Unfortunately, this firm threw in the towel when consumers treated these tomatoes with suspicion and chose not to purchase them. A huge disconnect exists between consumer expectations 
and the benefits of biotechnology has for the farming industry and all of the world's citizens who like to eat. Most corn grown in the United States today is genetically modified Bt corn. The Bt stands for the gene of the bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis, which makes corn resistant to insects such as rootworm. Traditionalists would have us believe that Bt corn is not what Mother Nature intended and that we should stick to pure old simple corn. Well, it isn't that simple. For centuries, since the days of the Aztecs in which corn has its roots, we have been modifying the corn plant through breeding and selection. As a result, corn often yields two ears per stalk, produces a higher yield of high fructose corn syrup, is more digestible, has greater standing power, and is tougher against disease. BT corn resists plant-killing corn borers so it can be grown without powerful organic phosphate chemicals that once were needed to ward off the corn borer. Similar technology has been used to create Roundup Ready soybeans, cotton, and rice. These varieties have been modified to resist the lethal effects of Roundup. That means Roundup, a relatively safe, short-acting chemical commonly used in lawns and flower beds, can be used to protect these crops from weeds. In place of powerful, potentially toxic chemicals, Roundup has a good safety record and poses little risk to humans. Gene-modified crops are environmentally friendly in other ways too. They greatly reduce the number of tillage passes required to control weeds, which reduces the amount of carbon released in the atmosphere and the amount of diesel fuel consumed. It has been calculated that over the past 10 years, farmers have saved 441 billion gallons of diesel using no-till practices with GMO crops. Recently, photos of which weed infested corn appeared in a national news magazine. This parasitic weed wipes out corn crops in Africa, taking over the root and stalk system, robbing it of water and absorbed soil nutrients. The photos of the ravaged crops were probably similar in appearance to the cornfields of early American settlers, which were grown by hand labor and without the benefit of hybrids and chemical weed control. Now, thanks to genetic engineering Africa has available to it, varieties of corn made resistant to herbicides that kill witch weed. But do you think African governments have endorsed these new varieties and helped African farmers grow them to market and feed their families? I will give you three guesses. The first two don't count. Why the deep suspicion and resistance to biotechnology? I can only guess as to all the reasons, but here are two. Our society has been through a couple of food scares that are not well understood. Mad cow disease, even though relatively rare, needs more research regarding its infectivity and the fact it occurs in cows that have consumed prion-laden feed. Secondly is the onset of E. coli OH157 illnesses. Even though E. coli is a food contamination issue, it has occurred because of a mutation within E. coli. Why has this occurred? Well, it's anybody's guess. Many civilized societies in the world would want guarantees that their food contains zero risk. They seem to forget that we live in an imperfect world where there's risk in simply getting out of bed in the morning or not getting out of bed. And they forget or overlook facts like the chance of getting mad cow disease is one in a million compared to one in 30,000 for getting struck by lightning. Is it any wonder that rank and file citizens are leery of our food supply and biotechnology when governments continue to live in the past? Currently, the European Union bans all GMO corn in their purchases from the United States. The European leaders are taking the less than progressive step of considering raising to 3% the amount of GMO corn that it may appear as a contaminant in imported corn. 
This outmoded food policy goes on in spite of the fact that the European Union no longer can raise adequate crops to feed its own population. Until world governments shed their medieval mindsets, people will continue to grow hungry in spite of our ability through modern science to grow crops in abundance. Well, that's it for today, folks. I'm Doc Sanders. We'll see you down the road.